Hello everybody, welcome back to the Super Over Podcast Season 2. I have Liam Flint with me and I am Jemmy Rodrix. And Liam, can you imagine? It's been two and a half years since we started. We start the Season 2 again. I know, it feels like it's been absolutely forever, but we are officially back. <laughs> and yeah, what people will be really pleased about is that you are back, Jemmy, to bless us with your <laughs> presence again. I mean, it has been so long and people are going to be wondering where on earth have we been, but I don't really know what we say to that, do you? <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, we're just taking a long break so that we can come fresh and start better this season. Yeah, that's it. We'll say it was all deliberate and it was a plan. That <laughs> the last two and a half years we've planned this episode and all the guests we're going to have on. Exactly, yeah. 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 Very calculated moves. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like it's been a long time. And I literally thought, you know, for people who haven't listened to us before, if you're with us here for the first time, you're really welcome. Um, so on the Super Over podcast, myself and Jemmy... We chat about cricket, we chat about life, um, we get some other pro cricket guests on as well. We basically just try and have a bit of fun. But yeah, Jamie, season one was great, wasn't it? I mean, I mean, what were some of your highlights when you look forward now? I think the one thing I lo- loved about uh, season one is, you know, the guests that we got on the show. We had like Faf Duplessis, uh, AVD, we had Smriti and Manas Labashin and so many others where I don't think I would have ever gotten the opportunity to get to speak to them. Yeah. And get to listen to their story. So I am someone who loves who loves listening to people's story. Uh, and I think it's really in- inspiring. And it's fun at the same time, you know. Mm. Uh, so so yeah, that is, that is one of the reasons too why I wanted to do season two. Because I think this is pretty cool, pretty fun. And so many times uh, the episodes we've done before has helped me in my own life and in my cricket. So I think this is one of the the best things that could happen to me. And that's why I'm here more than anything else. It's for me to learn, to grow and yeah, to share our experiences. Amazing. I'm glad you remembered all that, all the guests, seeing as it was two and a half, <laughs> two and a half years ago. Like so much has happened yeah. since then. And then she just thought... Yeah, I, I practiced a lot. I, I, I practiced, you know. <laughs> Went back through the archives to find out who we had on yeah. all that time ago. Yeah, I've literally been going through thinking, right, what are some of the big things that have happened in our lives since we last recorded just to emphasize Mm -hmm. how crazy it's been the amount of time that we've not done this for and I mean things for you Jemmy on like a cricket point of view obviously there's been we've been through a world cup you've had two editions of the hundred where you played for the northern superchargers here in the UK you've just done the WIPL I mean that's pretty crazy by itself even things like in the IPL, some of the franchises didn't even exist back then when we last recorded. Mm-hmm. There was no Gujarat, there was no Lucknow Super Giants. Yeah, we've even met in person since then. So we met at Leeds oh, yeah. after one of your games. Yes, we did. It was it was Liam's way taller than what I thought he would be, you know. <laughs> so that was good. And I met Priska, your wife, and I need to tell all of y'all that they are really uh, very cool couples. Uh, uh, yeah, they 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 are very funny and at the same time very caring. And yeah. Liam paid me to say all this to all of y'all. I'm not lying. Over you. <laughs> no, I'm no, kidding. I'm no, but it was it was really nice. It was really nice to meet you finally. I think because. It was the entire time I've seen you on the screen, but to meet you in person, it was amazing. Yeah, people will like relate to that. You've been on work calls, you go on Zoom, and you're like, what is this person like in real life? You were just as short yeah. as I expected you to be, though, so that's fine. <laughs> I was smaller, but you are tiny, and that's fine. <laughs> that worked fine, out really nicely. It doesn't matter. But that, yeah, that's crazy, because yeah. that, yeah, that was 2021 when we met. And then, yeah, like personal things for you in the last couple of years, any major things, obviously... You're just doing this. Your steady rise is going up and up. Mm-hmm. You're now like an influential young person affecting everything around you. Like, What's it been the last couple of years in terms of cricket and life for you? What have we missed? Huh, so I would, I think from the podcast, from when last we left back, I think my braces have come off. <laughs> so Jemmy's without braces. Uh, Jemmy's coloured her hair too. She's gotten highlights. So Jemmy's growing up. <laughs> but yeah, apart from that, like you said, there are a lot of things that happened. And um, I think for me, the journey has never been, you know, just up and up. It's been like ups and downs and ups and downs. Uh, But I think everything has, uh, you know, just fallen into place, I would say. You know, it's not been it's not been one of the smoothest rides. But at the same time, it's there's been a lot of learning, a lot of growth uh, and a lot of things that have happened around it that has made me understand myself more Mm -hmm. and my game more and helped me. Had me become more mature, I would say, in all this time. 
So what's coming up for you when you look forward now? Obviously, we're going to talk about what's going to be happening with season two. We're going to get loads of episodes in, but you've got a little bit of time off right now, which is a nice thing for you, I'm guessing. And then, um, you, you know, you've got cricket stuff starting up again soon, haven't you? Yeah. So right now we've gotten a break after the WPL, uh, where it is finally really nice to be back home, sleep on my own bed with my own pillow. I think nothing beats that. <laughs> And eat mom mom's homemade food. I think that is one thing I really miss on tours. So that's been the scene. And I taken a break after the WPL just to get my mind off cricket because we had a really long season, a really stressful one at the same time, very intense. So it was nice to get some family time. We'd gone for a short vacation and came back. Now back to the grind, uh, practice training. Everything is going on, and we have a month at home. Then we have an India camp, which will be in Bangalore at the Chinnaswamy Stadium, and then from there we're going to Bangladesh to play a series against them. Okay. What's been happening with you, Liam? I mean, what's been, lot's been going well, on? Yeah, so I met you know this list I've just done where I basically said all the things that have happened in the last two years. Well, like on a personal level, I've moved house twice since we last recorded. Mm-hmm. I've had two new jobs, which has been fun. Wow. So I'm now doing a job that I actually really enjoy. Um, I've been seeing so much cricket. I've been watching loads of the hundred. I've gone to test matches with my wife, Priska, who Jamie just said is the coolest person going. So loads has happened on a personal level. And I've just been keeping up with all the cricket, obviously watching you, Jamie, in the WRPL, smashing it up. And it just feels like, yeah, this is a very good time for us to go again for season two because we're fresh. We've got new ideas. You know, you're a bit more, yeah. you're a bit more famous, which is great for everyone else. <laughs> So it's yeah, I'm genuinely really excited for for what we're going to do, and we're going to have some great guests on, um, which we'll tell you, you know, more about as we go through the series. But yeah, for you, what would be maybe your one hope for this series? If someone's listening to this for the first time, what would you want to say to them what, to what they can expect from us over the next few months? I think what would be like I said, my basic idea was that to do the season two, one thing was to, I love to listen to people's story, but at the same thing, I just hope that what we do can bring hope to someone else or inspire someone else, or maybe, you know, just help them. You never know, like one small word someone says, you know, our guests come, they share their experience or something that they had learned in their life yeah. that can help us who are listening to, to get better or maybe be the answer to something we're searching for. So I think for me, that would be the basic goal of this entire podcast. And Jamie, we do need to address the fact that we're missing someone who would normally be. We are missing JP Dubini. Stop the recording. We can't. JP do it. has betrayed us. <laughs> I thought we are the perfect trio, but no. <laughs> we really miss JP. We love him. And basically, Jamie, we were talking about this, haven't we? It's just uh, it's about capacity. So for those of you who know JP, he's doing a lot of coaching. He's doing a lot of business stuff. He's got his own foundation. He's got his family. He's doing commentary. Um, he was with the Paul Royals in the SA20 that just started up in South Africa. So he's got so much going on um, that he won't be able to join us as a, a host, but we're hoping to get him on as a guest, aren't we, Jemmy? So Yeah, we, we should. We should. <laughs> yeah. We should. In short, Liam is just saying JP has become a big man now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's outgrown us, finally. No, but we miss you, JP. We miss you a lot and we love you. You've left me alone with Liam. I know. How could you? <laughs> Bad times. Jamie can't wait for us to get a guest on so that it's not just me and her, basically. <laughs> that's that's very fun too. But yeah, no, we we yeah, just want to say thanks to JP really. It was such a good first season. He brought so much to it. You know, he's very wise. Yeah. I know we, we took the mick out of his age a lot and said that he's really old. But <laughs> with that comes a lot of wisdom. We love him very much and we will get him back on the show. We love you, JP. So, Jemmy, let's quickly talk about like the here and now. I know you've not seen too much cricket because you've been just having a bit of a, you know, a chill out. But have you caught any of the IPL reflected on the WIPL, all that kind of stuff? Uh, talking about the IPL first, uh, i just taken a break from cricket. So I try to stay away a little from at least the first half of the season. Uh, but yeah, whenever I got time, I did watch the highlights and stuff. But not like sincerely following the IPL. Uh, but yeah, I think now I have time that I'll get back. But the team I love the most, <laughs> actually two teams this time because I'm playing for the Delhi Capitals, so I have a soft corner for Delhi Capitals. Yeah, but I also love Mumbai Indians. So yeah, uh, I'm not sure how well are they doing right now, but I'm just playing that they top the table. <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. Every, yeah, if you're listening to this, Jemmy's saying 
that she's not watching it because she's too busy. But if you look at the points table, you'll see that her beloved Mumbai are not doing very well. So I think it's just her protecting her emotions, basically. <laughs> no, they will bounce back. Mumbai has been proving that every single time and they will do it. Kind but of. just to make it clear, guys, in the WPL, with all my heart, I support Delhi Capitals. <laughs> In the IPL Mumbai in there. That, yeah. People that. might just take it in the wrong way though. Get that in there. That's important. Important for people to know. And yeah, Jamie, I know you said you had a little bit of a break and you mentioned earlier like the ups and downs of the last couple of years. Just talk us mm-hmm. through a little bit of that. How has it been? What are some of the things that you've been dealing with as a player when like your profile has gone up? You've been involved in awesome stuff. Lots of eyes on you. But what's that been like mm-hmm. for you, for Jemmy, the person? Yeah, a lot of things have happened, I think, over the last few years. I mean, uh, there have been high highs and low lows, if I could just put it forth in easier terms. Um, Talking about the lows, I would talk about uh, me being dropped from the World Cup. I think that was one of the most toughest times of my entire life because uh, cricket is something I love. Playing the World Cup is my dream. And both of them weren't happening at that time, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was not able to be with the team I love the most. And I remember when I had gotten the news, I couldn't sleep for nights. Like I was, I was sleeping for an hour, waking up suddenly with a dreadful dream or a thought, and I was not, I was not doing very well mentally. Like I was even going for practice, and like, okay, now because I got dropped, you know, I'm going to prove something. I want to, you know, take out all that frustration, things and that. But I realized there was no point of me practicing when it was coming from a wrong, from a wrong place. So then I took my mom and dad aside one day, made them sit and I had a conversation with them and I told them, you know, Mama, Dada, I'm not doing well mentally and I think I need to take a break. And I started, I I broke down in front of them. And my dad's like the strongest person I know. He never cries. But that day he also started crying and he said, you know, for me to go through something, it's fine. But when I see my own daughter, the one I love so much crying, it's 10,000 times worse. Mm. And he cried. And then my mom was like, it is so difficult for me to silently seeing two people I love so much going through and I can't do anything about it. You know, I feel helpless. My mom also started crying. So before that, we were just faking it for each other. You know, we were trying to be strong, you know, trying to fake a smile and things like that. But inside, everyone was hurting. But I think that's when the healing started. And uh, that's when as a family, we, we got together. We're just vulnerable and we're just honest. And I think that's where the healing started. And I took a break from cricket from there. I got involved in church, you know, took my mind off uh, of of anything re- relating to cricket, spent a lot of time with my family because I love my family. Uh, and that really helped me, you know. Then I, after maybe seven to ten days, or I don't know how many days it was, I got back to my coach, my dad and my coach, Prashant Shetty. And we planned out, we had a plan because I had two months before the domestic season could start. Yeah. We planned out uh, how we're going to go about and go forth. And I think that moment, was when everything changed because it changed the way I practiced. And if it was not for the World Cup drop, I don't think I would have practiced the way I did. So I put myself through challenging situations, you know, played with the boys uh, a lot, a lot more, played a lot of matches. In a week, I used to play two matches. I used to go to Azad Medan. So for those who don't know Azad Medan, it's a huge ground in Mumbai, which has like 100 pitches, like very close to each other. So in the morning, that pitch... It's so damp that you can literally put your finger inside and it'll go in. And the second half is completely opposite. It's like drastic turn, you know, a slow turning track. So I, I was playing with good quality boys, you know, Mumbai, Mumbai bowlers, uh, under 19 and stuff. And going over there, it was, it was a real, a real challenge for me. But going there and scoring gave me a lot of confidence. I understood my game more. I remember I used to do this one thing that, you know, sometimes the week used to be so hard because... When you're dropped, you just want to go back and perform and get back in the team. But mm-hmm. I had two months. And those two months felt like forever. Like it was not getting over. So I had weeks where, you know, it was really it was really tough, you know. Uh, I used to go practice, work hard. But I was like, all these thoughts coming in my mind. Will I be able to make a comeback? What if this, what if this is the end of the world for me? And even the World Cup matches were going on, the Women's World Cup. I didn't watch any. Like, I was following the scores, hoping India wins. Yeah. But I was not in a state where I could actually watch the games because I'm not doing great mentally. So there used to be times I used to, like, in the night, nobody knew I used to put a pillow on my face and just cry uh, because it was really tough. Mm. So I used to do one thing where every Sunday I used to take myself out. Sunday is my rest day. 
and I should treat myself for doing well that week. So I should give myself a cup of coffee or maybe a cheat meal just to reward myself and like a pat on my back. Yeah, okay, Tammy, you've done well this week. So it was that. But one thing that happened through this journey was uh, I saw how God took the thing that I thought that would harm me and destroy me, how he took it and worked everything together for my good and used it to take me to a whole new level, I would say. Wow. Because during this time, there was this one uh, scripture that I was really clinging on to uh, was in 2 Corinthians 4 mm-hmm. in the message translation, which says, uh, every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. More and more praise, more and more people, more and more grace. So the next line is my favorite. It says, so we are not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without, without the unfolding of his grace. And then it goes on to say, these hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than what meets the eye. So I think I've just seen God, you know, take everything. It was, it was the most toughest time for me, but I think the lowest phases of your lives also uh, reveal to you God's faithfulness like never before. You know, you end up trusting God like you've never trusted him before. You end, end up relying on God like you've never relied on him before because you're at rock bottom. You have nothing else to do but trust God. Yeah. Because there, there are times where you feel you are in control of your life, but you are not. You just realize I am not in control as I think. You know, life happens, things happen. But the only one who is in control is Jesus. And he can work everything together for your good. And so this these two months, it wasn't the easiest time. But also it was one of the most fruitful time for me because it brought out the best uh, in me. And I also got to know more about my game, more about myself, more about my family and how important it is to have good relationships and good good friendships. Because that time I understood, you know, who are actually for me, who are not. Mm-hmm. You know, there were there were few people and I know they are, they are the real people who are actually who were with me through that time at my lowest. Uh, so, so yeah, and that's how the journey went. And then came the domestic season. I was very nervous, you know, uh, before that, because I knew it was such an important season for me. But again, the God lifted me up. Everything fell into place, you know, got good scores, big scores came. The Women's T20 Challenge, the I, uh, the Women's T20 Challenge, the WPL that we play yeah. now. So that, so there, again, I got good scores there, came back uh, in, came back, uh, and played the Sri Lanka series, got the player of the match in my first comeback match. And, you know, that just felt really good. Like, everything I went through, you know, the next morning I woke up, I just went for a walk and I was just thanking God for everything we went through and we've come here. And I still remember this very fresh uh, right now. It was exactly the same time last year that I was dropped from the World Cup. That exact same time I was in South Africa this year playing my World Cup, uh, playing the World Cup for India. And... Again, I was just out there in the night, all alone, just went for a walk. And I said, you know, Lord Jesus, thank you. It's because of you I'm here today. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be here. Wow. And then came the game against Pakistan, where again, God lifted me up. Got a 50, we won Richa. And I had an amazing partnership. And it was a crucial game, very crucial game. But I feel all the, 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 these last few months, that the pressure, the... The tears, the hard work and everything, it just fell into place and came in at the right time when it mattered the most. That's so yeah, it's been cr- kind of a crazy ride, but at the same time, uh, it's been an eye-opener. Mm. There's a lot of lots to learn and yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, change this for anything. Even though it was very tough, extremely tough, but I wouldn't change it for anything because... Uh, I be, I believe God uses things to you know prepare you for 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 the things He has in store for you. Wow, yeah, that's an amazing story. And there you go for your teaser for season two. You got plenty more of Jemmy just speaking honestly about her life coming up. So yeah, that's that's really powerful because that's what we don't see. That's what people looking into your life wouldn't necessarily ever know. So yeah, that's that's so amazing to hear. Uh, right, Jemmy, let's just quickly finish some questions. So. Bad always, questions. Let's go. Let's go. Questions. We did get over six hundred <laughs> six zero zero questions in. So, we, I mean, being the good co-host that I am, I did go through them all. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, so I like how you just complimented yourself. Well done, Liam. Well done. Thank you deserve you. the slap. I wanted that. I wanted that appreciation. 
Um, so yeah, I've sieved through, I've come up with some ones. So thank you so much for all the questions we got. And we will yes. we'll keep asking questions each episode. So don't worry, we'll try and get to yours. So Jemmy, a few different things here. Um, mm-hmm. I am Loki King says, what is your favorite movie of all time? Okay. So firstly, thank you to everyone, like Liam said, for asking questions. And Liam doesn't tell me the questions, okay? So everything is, he wants everything spontaneous. Secret. So, okay, my favorite movie. Now, I would say Three Idiots and uh, Inside Out, the animated one. <laughs> I thought you were like, the animated one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to specify. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get the right one. Um, Okay, how do you keep yourself so energetic and keep spreading positive vibes almost every time? Because that's what everyone says. We had about 100 questions saying the same thing. <laughs> how are you so positive all the time? Isn't it exhausting? <laughs> I think the, the tougher job for me is to you know, just sit quietly and be calm. I think being energetic is much more natural and easier. But yeah, like I said, it's, it's natural. You know, I don't have to work hard towards it. I think uh, that's my personality, you know, being the fun-loving kind of person I am. And for me, it is I love to see people around me happy and with a smile. So I think when you have that in mind, it's just much more easier to spread the positive vibes. You're definitely positive. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rami Chowdhury says, will Jemmy enjoy being captain if she's given the opportunity to lead one day? I'm eager to know. I love captaincy. I think uh, if you give me an option, I'll always choose to be a captain of a team. Okay. Uh, because I, I've been leading the Mumbai team, my state team, and I love that added responsibility, you know, where a captain is someone who who has to lead from the front, you know. You can't just tell you do this, you do that. you got to lead by example. you got to lead from the front. And at the same time, it's how you get a team together, how you get the best out of each player. And this is something I love doing. And at the same time, being a captain, you have to be very active uh, in your mind, you know, very very tactical. And it, captaincy, you cannot plan or you cannot... I, I would say there's no book that you can learn captaincy from, you know. The more you play, the better you get. And at the same time, you need to uh, be very spontaneous. So this is something I love because if I'm not doing captaincy, you know, you're just, you're not that involved in the game. But when you're a captain, you're always taking, like, I'll always think, okay, what my bowler requires right now. Or I will think as a batter, okay, this is a batter, what the batter is going to do right now. And I'll try and think as a batter or as a bowler and make my moves accordingly. So yes, captaincy is something I love and I would love to lead uh, my team. Okay, we'll make sure we tell Meg Lanning that, that you secretly... (laughs) No, no, I think Meg's an amazing captain. (laughs) I'm good being the vice captain. (laughs) Okay, uh, a little bit different. Top three travel destinations. I think one uh, for sure would be New Zealand. I love New Zealand. Uh, Number two, I would go to... The north side of India, I've never been to uh, the north side of India. And it's a very, uh, like I've seen pictures and stuff, it's very beautiful. At the same time, it's cold. Unlike Mumbai, it's like 67 degrees every day. So, yeah, so the north side. And I would go to, um, I think, South Africa. I really love South Africa. Cape Town. Cape Town. That's where our big man is JP Dumri. <laughs> yeah. They knock on his door. Yeah. I love a bit of, love a bit of Cape Town. Okay, final one. Um Pratanav says, What is your daily diet? What do you My daily diet? Yeah, what's your routine? Breakfast, lunch, Ooh, and dinner. Uh, okay. So I wake up in the morning and I have to have glutamine with lime lime water. That that's how I start. Then uh I mean, it's more of a, I would say, my main target is to eat a lot of protein because okay. my body requires that. So that's my main, main, main purpose. But it depends. Like every day, it's very different. But yeah, now it's kind of structured where I have to eat my veggies. And uh, I, I don't, Jemmy doesn't like eating her veggies. But then mom gets a bowl of veggies. Veggies first, then the entire meal. Then I can touch the chicken. So yeah, it's yeah. that. But yeah, I, for me, it's not a lot. Like I don't have to avoid a lot of things. Uh, for me, it's more about eating healthy and eating better and avoiding junk. I'll keep a cheat day on Sunday. But yeah, apart from that, yeah, that's that's how my diet looks. Okay. So just like to throw something in off the back of that question, what's your go-to junk food item? If you can just have it, what would you, what would you go for? I have two. One is chicken wings and the other thing is Nutella pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, Nutella pancakes. All time favorite. Yeah, I love Nutella pancakes. But I wouldn't yeah. like chicken wings. I wouldn't say they're junk food. It is deep fried, no? 
Well, yeah. It's oily. I mean, it's still... I mean, the grilled one is the healthier one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Nutella pancakes. Yeah. I normally have those with banana, like sliced banana on. Or uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Nice. That, I was going to... That'll link in nicely because my, my big expectation for season two is that I'm going to come to Mumbai and we're going to record in person. So... Yes. When, when we do that, we can have Nutella pancakes. Yes, there's there's a really nice place just near my house, two minutes away. I have to take you. But I'll make you try more of Indian spicy food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a spice challenge as one of the podcasts. Yeah. Be good <laughs> we can do that. Okay, right, Gemma, we'll let you go. So that is your teaser episode. We're going to be putting out our first episode shortly. We'll reveal the guest to you. So if you're not already following us on socials, go over to the Super Over on Instagram. We're also on YouTube. If you go on the Super Over podcast, They're, those are kind of our main video outlets. And yeah, go and follow Jemmy because she's good fun, even though she tires <laughs> everyone out. And yeah, we'll be with you very shortly for the proper season. So yeah, welcome back, Jemmy. We've done it. We've done it. Welcome back, Liam, and stay tuned, guys. It's going to be fun. See you later.